4.30 a.m. Lieutenant Craig Duck arrives at Engine 26, Truck 15. He stows his gear. The lieutenant from engine checks in with him as they prepare for the day. Medical local. arrive on scene at a home in a residential neighborhood. In the home, they find a woman in need of medical assistance. She is non-responsive and a family member had to call 911. They place her in the AMBO for her trip to the hospital. Yeah, 
going. Engine 26 is back in service. When I'm not here at the firehouse, I spend the majority of the day with my kids. Um, you know, just, just spending time with the family. I'm, I'm more happy when I'm with my kids. And also, definitely working out and spend a lot of time in the last year making prayer. <laughs> Morning. We join Lieutenant Duck and his crew of Truck 15. They start the morning with training. They start the training with the technique to enter a structure through a brick wall. The first attempt is made with a battering ram. Their next attempt is with a Halligan bar and a sledgehammer. After a severe pounding, the crew slams the Halligan bar back into the target area and once again uses the sledgehammer. Then use the sledgehammer to break down the edges of the crumbling brick. They are trying to make a man-sized hole and have just a little ways to go. <laughs> good little workout too, man. Get a good yeah. Look at a real, a real. Oh, this is all. Oh, no. Oh, the baby, let's clear that thing out a little bit more yeah, quick. Right, right in here, we go right there. Yeah, we got an office in there. Yeah, we got a real office. Wow. Well, 
Now that they can fit through the hole, they enter the structure and move to the next exercise. You want to keep them going through the, on the other side? Firefighter Eric Flory shows the crew how to remove a steel door by grinding off its hinges with a K2 saw that has a metal saw blade. Sparks fly as he grinds off the hinge pins. The incident that I remember the most, which uh, really opened my eyes to the dangers of firefighting, was about two months ago we had a fire on Queen's Chapel Road. It was a vacant house. I was riding forcible entry on the truck, which is the bar position. I uh, forced entry for the engine company and proceeded to do a primary search of the fire floor to look for, to look for uh, the potential victims. After I completed my search, the engine company was in, they put out a small fire, and then uh, we proceeded to go up to the second floor, and when I was walking up the stairs, my, the stairs actually broke underneath me, and I uh, almost fell down through the basement. Luckily, I caught myself beforehand, refooted myself, and took a safer route up the stairs. The next exercise is one for safety. If they are stuck in a room with fire without tools and need to penetrate a sheetrock wall to get to safety. Lieutenant Duck shows them an easy way to enter by using their SCBA on their back and crushing it through the wall between the two by fours. They then learn how to open a locked door using their halogen bar. The next exercise is roof ventilation. In this exercise, they use a bullet saw to cut through the tarred plywood roof. The crew needs to learn how to create the correct size hole in the roof. Resistance, right? Don't try to go through resistance. That's called support. Right. So when you're, like if you're saying that the, the, that the joists are running this way, okay? And when you're making your cut this way, you feel resistance, just roll it over, next one, roll it over. Oh, see what okay. I mean? Try doing that here and see if, if you can feel the difference. Right, what you agree? They are taught so to cut between roof joists and without causing monumental damage to a structure. This is also to keep the roof safe for the firefighters. So you, you don't want to do a lot of damage. So right here, you see this? Yeah. This is where you came with resistance. Right. So if I'm coming this way and I feel resistance, just roll it up over top. Okay. Okay, so try it right here and you feel the difference. So right about in here, just kind of like roll it over. You know what I mean by that? Yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. Ah, uh, nah, they treat the rookies pretty bad, man. You know, had to clean up everything, had to cook everything, had to, everything in here that was done, the rookies pretty much had to do. If you have a rookie, then it's a group effort. For a little probationary period, then everything, you know, everybody pans out, everybody does what they're supposed to do, but at first, oh no, nah, it was rough. What I do to stay in shape, with all the calls we get out, pretty much, you know, jog, basketball, football, you know, just tennis sometimes if I can find a partner, but that's pretty much it.
The odd chance that we're going to go to uh, um, 21 and 11's area. Okay, you know the, the scuttle, right? right? You come on the roof like the scuttle that we came up. Right. All right, if, if you're taking that out, some places have a void space where you literally have to take up that whole scuttle and it'll be about a couple of inches. And some of their big spectacular fires that they had over there is because it got in that void space and ran. Nobody opened, truly opened up the scuttle. Right. And and so if we go over there, that should be the first thing we're looking for. Take take the whole scuttle out. Look underneath. Sometimes they'll have they'll have uh, um, plywood on there. Get that plywood out there. Get to that void space. And then they're going. And then now, is this is this an acceptable hole? Okay. Could we make it bigger? Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah, you can still make it bigger, but at least you got it started. You would ask me in the beginning about a, a small cut. Now, I would do that, that like that, if, You know how they used to say you hit that triangle joint mm -hmm. first, then do your squid. Right. Well, that gives you an idea of where you want to cut. So when you're coming to the roof and you're looking at, at this whole building, you say, well, I think the fire's here. Or if they're saying it's in exposure. So what you would do, you would go to the assigned address. You'd come up the ladder anyway. You'd make your hole. Say mm -hmm. there's fire coming out of there. Well, then you want to find out if it looks like a huge fire, right? In other words, smoke and fire, and you, you're listening to the radio and they don't have it out. I can come over here and make one of those little cuts. I can go over to that one and make a little cut. And so if you make the little kerf cut and then fire start, or, or smoke starts coming out, then you just say, you know, roof team to, the, to, to me or to, that's, that's like a priority. You say roof team to uh, operations. Looks like it's getting in the exposures. I'm opening up now. The last exercise is repelling off a balcony. Most of his crew have not repelled since the academy. Lieutenant Duck demonstrates how to repel off the balcony with ease. Fighter Fighter Caloric is having a little difficult on his descent. Tillerman Firefighter Abdullah Achman yells out some advice to Eric. Eric has a few problems, but he makes it down without an accident. The crew packs up and head back to the station. All around Washington, D.C., the crews from D.C. Fire and EMS are participating in a fundraising drive for Jerry Lewis's kids. This one is called Fill the Boot. Today, the crews of both engine and truck participate in the fundraiser at this train station. They are asking for spare change from the commuters. Engineer firefighter Donald Lewis is in hopes of getting over $50 in donations.
During this fundraiser, the crews are still in service. As they tallied at the end of their efforts, they are well over the $50. Back at the station, some of the crew fixed dinner. Under the direction of Lieutenant Duck, Abdullah had ordered a new safety harness that was just delivered. He could have used it today if it would have arrived on time. 